Uh, my understanding is uh, we're gonna we're gonna read my newest book, uh, Trying Tonight. So um, uh, why don't we why don't we get started? How do you do that? I didn't realize I had said it out loud, but the sculptor looked over and replied, you simply do it. Oh no, I could never do that. How do you know, he asked. I just know. Confused, I walked away. He must be joking, I thought. But as I left, I couldn't help wondering what it would be like to create something so incredible. When I returned, the sculptor looked over at me and asked, how's your sculpture coming along? I'm just here to watch. The best way to give your talents is an, opportun an opportunity is to try, he responded. I'd rather just watch. I can't mess things up if I just watch. <laughs> ah, yes, he nodded. If you do nothing, it feels safe, but everything stays the same. If you do nothing, there's less to experience, less to love, and less to learn. The fear of failing is the scariest part and it stops most people from starting. The only way to get to where you wanna go is to take a step in that direction. And the best way to do that is to begin. It was all I could think about. Even as I slept, I dreamt of creating beautiful things I was excited to get started, but as I was working, I realized something was wrong. With every strike, I felt a little more deflated. With every blow, my disappointment grew. This was not turning out the way I'd imagined. Why did I think I could do it? Why did I let myself care about this so much? The next time I saw the sculptor, he asked about my work. And I told him it was no good and I'd quit. Why would you do that? Why would you do that, he asked. Because it feels awful to want something so badly and then just be disappointed. Yes, the sculptor replied, disappointment hurts. But failure is temporary and in many ways necessary. It shows us how something can't be done, which means we're a little closer to finding out how it can. When you first tried to walk, you fell. But you picked yourself up and tried again. You were willing to fail over and over and over, and that's why you succeeded. How do I know this? You're standing in front of me now. I had tried and I'd failed, and now he's asking me to try again? What good would that do? I'd already proven I couldn't do it. But if I was honest, I wanted to believe I could. So even though I was worried that I wasn't good enough, I decided to try again. I worked and worked and then worked some more. And while I could see it was a little better, it still wasn't at all what I wanted it to be. I stormed up to the sculptor. See, I told you I wasn't any good and this proves it. Are you happy now? Yes, he replied. I'm happy. It's good to see you sculpting. But it's terrible. I don't even know what I'm making anymore. You're making progress, he explained. I see talents emerging. I see risks being taken. I see courage. I see caring. I see perseverance. Yes, I see much progress indeed. And I hope you'll keep trying. I tried again and again and again. As I stepped back and looked at my work, I had to admit, I wished I was better.
I went to talk to the sculptor and he asked me to go for a walk with him. He said, I know it can be hard when things don't turn out as you'd hoped, but be proud of your failures. I know I am. Every one of them. I can't imagine you ever failing. He laughed more times than I can count. But each time you fail, you get a little smarter, a little braver, a little stronger. The truth is, we're all failures. The dreamers, the doers, the creators. Being a failure means you love something. You cared. It means you stepped forward and didn't hold back. You tried. That's why I brought you here. He gestured to the statues around him. These are my friends. These are my failures. And I'm grateful for every one of them because they helped me become who I am today. I'll tell you a secret, the sculptor confided. I'm now much closer to the end of my life than the beginning. And time passes, whether we have the courage to do something good and worthwhile, or we don't. It's been years since he's been gone. I will always treasure the time I spent with him and I'll never forget our conversations or what he taught me. When we make it safe, when we make it safe to fail, we make it safe to succeed. How do I do that? Well, thank you for sharing my uh, newest uh, picture book. Uh, that was a lot of fun to, to read that for all of you. Um, so my, my time is, uh, is yours. If you wanna uh, have a, a little bit of a Q and A, if you'd like to ask a few questions, uh, I'd be happy to, to answer them. And uh, I'm, I'm always interested in talking about what the what the kids are interested in talking about. Toby, I have one. I see that you've worked with different illustrators. How is it working with different illustrators for these books? Um, that, that's a, a great point. It's, it's different, I think, each time. Um, I originally started with a really wonderful illustrator named Mae Basum, uh, who, uh, collaborated with me on uh, what do you do with an idea? What do you do with a problem? What do you do with the chance? And it was her first, uh, it was my first book with what do you do with an idea and her first book uh, illustrating as well. Uh, it's kind of a funny story because um, she is, uh, she lives in China. And so uh, she didn't speak any English and I didn't speak any Mandarin. And uh, I knew that the book that I had written was a bit of a metaphor and um, it was really for not just kids, but people of all ages. And um, so I was a little worried that she wouldn't understand it, but we worked through a translator and, it, and one of the things I'm most proud of is, is it really showed that ideas and creativity and uh, you know, they, they really don't have a language, they're, they're universal. And she really understood the concept and it was so much fun working with her, though a big challenge uh, working through a translator the entire project. We never met, we, uh, we just, uh, uh, had to uh, go through coded messages, um, which was which was kind of fun and 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 interesting for the first book. But I've gotten to work with uh, 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 Gabriella Broch in uh, in Israel, and uh, Elise Hurst um, in Australia has has done um, trying. And so I, I find that it's one of the greatest things uh, working on these projects that you get to have this intimate, long relationship with another really, really amazingly talented person. Uh, and we're trying to make something great together. And so it's really, really a lot of fun to um, take on that, that challenge and to, you know, see what we can do with it. But uh, I, I, I personally find it to be just a massive privilege and honor to get to get to work so long with these, these amazing artists. I liked your message of just keep, it's Kathleen, of just keep trying. And if you don't try, 
You're not going yeah, to. Yeah, that's a that that's you know there's a couple of books that I've done. One is uh, 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 Jennifer's son showed me was one of his favorite books. What do you do with the problem? Um, and trying, uh, you know, a lot of people don't want to talk about failures and problems. Um, and uh, and I was even told by the the large you know retailers, even though we had such a a big success with what do you do with an idea. When I wrote what do you do with a problem. They were asking if I'd consider retitling it, or maybe you know doing something that was more pleasant. Um, and you know, I I thought you know problems are almost more universal than ideas in a lot of ways. You know, we all we all have them, and uh, and it's it's great to be able to talk about these things more and uh, and to figure out uh, how how there are gifts inside of some of the setbacks and some of the adversity we get in life. Um, and so similarly with trying, uh, I originally uh, wanted to write a book about failure. And I realized as I, as I got into it more that failure is just a part of the story. You know, it's not, it's not the whole story and it's a, it's a necessary part of the story, but um, that uh, I, I, I like the trying, the concept and the title of that because it kind of has two definitions. One is, you know, something that uh, is, is difficult or irritating and the other aspect of it is giving effort. And I think that both definitions are really important for the book. Um, and so I think with all of my books, um, they're, they're incomplete without the reader. And, uh, and what I mean by that is the, the book is fine, but what I really hope happens is that they initiate discussion. And they, they are a catalyst for um, the conversations that can happen about hopes and dreams and challenges um, with parents and their kids or teachers or, or, or you know, kid to kid. Uh, with What Do You Do With An Idea, my first book, um, it, it is wonderful that to start a vocabulary and a dialogue about believing in your own ideas. But I think it just as important to that book was, how are we with other people's ideas? You know, how are we, as far as being someone that listens and supports and is there for other people, um, that's a big component. I wrote that book originally because I was watching our own creative teams talking about new concepts. And I thought we could be kinder, we could be more gentle with new concepts and ideas uh, than what we're doing here. And that gave me the idea to write uh, the picture book. And I did want it to be a picture book to start that conversation at a younger age. And hopefully the book would, would grow with people. Um, but uh, uh, I really do think that the, if there is any magic in, in the books that, that I do, it's, it's more what happens after they've been read and the conversations and the, and the thoughts that happen um, you know, beyond the text itself. I see, I see a hand up in, in, in Jennifer's. Uh, do you get stuck writing? Do I get stuck? Writing. Mm -hmm. I do, yeah. Um, I think that, uh, uh, you know, you can get stuck in a lot of things and writing is certainly one of those places where it's hard to uh, just write great stuff because you want to. Um, I think some of it has to do with um, how you can, you know, one of the great, one of the great ways to learn about writing is to, is to really do a lot of reading. And that's a, that's a wonderful place to, to start. Uh, it really gives you so many ideas about, about writing. And I also find that it's it's really good. You know, one of the things that's, that sounds kind of, doesn't sound like it makes sense to a lot of kids, but one of the really great things that your friend is, is boredom. And you, you, wanna, you, want, you wanna be bored. You wanna, you wanna have space to, I always say to my kids, you know, you want, I, want, I want them to think about creating before they're consuming. Meaning that there's so many things that can entertain us. There's so many things that we can do with games and TV and computers and things, but your mind is not hunting and searching for something to do in the way that it can create if it's already satisfied and it's already entertained. And so those spaces that you feel bored and those spaces that feel very quiet to you, those are great things for, for writing and they're great things for, for your creativity. I always find going for walks and being out in nature and some of those things are really, really great if I feel like I'm kind of a little bit stuck writing. So uh, great question, but yeah, that, I, that happens to me certainly as I think just about every writer. Do we have other questions for Kobe? I can't tell if the camera's ones that are off. So um, 
yeah and i can certainly... stop recording so that um people i'm going to stop recording so that the little kids can um you know there we go Great.